Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name is Stumble98, and welcome to Sonic Project 06. If you don't know what Sonic Project 06 is, it is a fan remake in the Unity engine by lead developer Chaos X, seeking to completely remake and reimagine Sonic 06 in modern times. This game is absolutely fantastic, re-implementing physics, adding new moves, changing the stages up, and all that just to make this one of the best 3d sonic experiences out there what i'm going to be doing today is showing you the speed run of sonic's campaign in order to run sonic project 06 all you have to do is run sonic's 10 stages here you can do them in any order but i'm going to be doing them in the list order just for the sake of consistency and i think it's the most fun way to do it all righty let's go ahead and get our speed run started here in three two one Let's go. I am going to be commentating over this game the best I can, but it is a Sonic game, so things move really quickly. First things first, I want to talk about how Sonic controls in this game. Basically, he has the Sonic 06 moveset with the great Sonic Adventure 2 uh, physics and controls and the Sonic Adventure 1 spam dash. Now, you may be wondering, Stummo, you're 17 seconds into this level and you haven't done a single spin dash other than that one. And you're correct, because Sonic in Sonic 06, and by extension Sonic P06, has one of the coolest gameplay mechanics to ever grace the series, and it's unfortunate it was in Sonic 06, and never redone again, and these are Sonic's gem abilities. So in P06, you can find each of these gems scattered around the different levels, and they each grant Sonic a special ability. This one here is an unused one from the original game, the Rainbow Gem, which allows us to transform into Super Sonic, and the one I'm going to be using the most throughout the speedrun is the blue gem, which grants Sonic an instant burst of speed, which why the spin dash isn't as useful. M uh, mock speed Super Sonic, or sorry, Super Sonic in mock speed sections is absolutely ridiculous, so we generally want to save our rings for those. Switching on over to Tails here, interesting thing about Tails' flight in this game is if you feather the A button, you can actually gain a lot more height and a lot more distance, which allows us to go right from when we switch to Tails all the way over to that switch to switch back to Super Sonic on the Orca and make our way into this mock speed section. So, in the hit Sonic racing game Sonic Riders, Sonic mentions to his rival Jet the Hawk that even without wings, he can still fly, and that isn't any truer there than it is in PO6, because we are going to do roof launches. Probably one of Sonic PO6's coolest trick, we use the speed of Mach Speed Supersonic, along with the slope of the ramps in order to gain an insane amount of height and distance, and skip a lot of what, be, what would be more mundane automated sections. We can Supersonic is so ridiculously fast, we can just jump off the roof to go straight uh, over to that tunnel there and get to the end of Sonic's mock speed section insanely quickly as we hit the goal ring We don't transform back into regular Sonic, but instead get this cool little pose Similar to what we see at the very end of retail Sonic 06 So that was basically wave ocean and it's an insanely kinetic stage probably one of the best stages in the game And we are going to move on to dusty desert Dusty Desert features our uh, second gameplay change as we are playing Sonic and Elise. Actually, our third gameplay change because we played as Tails. Um, with Sonic and Elise, basically we are a neutered Sonic. We cannot spin dash, we cannot spin kick, and we cannot use the gems most importantly. But what we can use is this fire shield, which allows us to run on this quicksand as well as allows us to uh, destroy and just run right through enemies, which will be seen more in the second Elise stage, Tropical Jungle. So basically what we have to figure out is how to move Sonic as fast as possible. And one of those ways is with his anti-grav slide, because his anti-grav slide uh, actually preserves uh, whatever momentum you had before you activated it. So what we can do is we can do a light dash, and then the anti-grav slide to carry all that light dash speed um, for much, much, much longer, which allows us to complete Dusty Desert in under 50 seconds, which is absolutely insane. As we sit through about 15 to 20 seconds of results screen here, the next stage we are going to be entering is White Acropolis. White Acropolis, one of my personal favorite stages specifically because of the music, but the music of Sonic 06 is insanely good. Um, we are going to be seeing yet another gameplay change with Sonic on the snowboard. 
Um, kind of the mechanics of the snowboard actually work very similarly, similarly to Retail 06, um, which is kind of contrary to a lot of other things in Project 06, but uh, kind of funny as well. Um, basically, all we're doing is we're holding down the A button, and then as we get to those glowy ramp icons, we are releasing the A button, and that allows us to do a trick as Sonic. Another thing that Chaos added that wasn't in the original game is this little kick that Sonic can do as if he were on a skateboard. And what that allows us to do is keep Sonic moving at full speed. He basically added it for this section of White Acropolis because it is very bumpy terrain and Sonic can get stomped by a lot of different rocks or snowballs or a bunch of random things. So the kick can get Sonic back up to speed uh, pretty, pretty fast. Um, additionally, actually doing the kick makes Sonic move at a constant speed. It's basically his fastest speed. So we basically just want to mash the kick as much as possible. Moving on, we are going to see our first huge skip of Sonic, uh, Sonic speed run here. What we are going to do is destroy these enemies to level up our blue gem to level three, use the slope of that rock, and then a new gem, the sky gem, to launch ourselves over the invisible wall and go straight to the goal ring, completely ignoring Tails of Section and most of Section 2 of White Acropolis. The Sky Gem, if you don't know, is essentially like an Ender Pearl from Minecraft, except instead of teleporting, you actually have travel time. But if you flow th throw the Sky Gem in the air, you actually have a set arc and set speed that the character moves at. Cool little cutscene between Sonic and Shadow there at the beginning of Crisis City, yet into another snowboard section here. Fun fact, the snowboard actually moves, I think it's twice as fast, it's somewhere between 1.5 and twice as fast as uh, White Acropolis, specifically because the terrain is a lot more stretched out here. And uh, honestly, I prefer this section to the White Acropolis section, even though I do like White Acropolis when you play the stage casually a lot more to Crisis City. Which is kind of surprising considering White Acropolis is much shorter than this stage. One little fun thing I like to do with the Twitch tat here is, let's get the 360! Hoo. Go ahead and get the 360 there just for a little bit of swag tech and the swag doesn't end because you can in fact snowboard down these slopes backwards. You can also do this in White Acropolis. Cool little thing that Chaos intentionally programmed into this game. Very, very cool stuff. As we enter section two of Crisis City here, we're going to be, see, be seeing, of course, a lot of Sonic's blue gem. Uh, basically, they're going to be strapped to his shoes this entire run. And we're going to be seeing a little bit of a blue, uh, new gem here as we get to the end. So, we're just going to go ahead and head right through this section, doing a big jump here. Oh, didn't get quite as big, so I'm actually using an extra gem there, the purple gem, which allows Sonic to get extra jumps in the air, as well as the white gem. What the white gem does is allows us to get extra jump dashes so we can cross insane distances in the air as long as we have action gauge in the bottom right which is basically sonic's mana bar in order to do his custom actions with the gems to do so here we are with another big skip we're going to switch from the blue gem to the white gem really quickly here and go all the way to the end of sonic's second section of crisis city moving on into section three here of crisis city this is one of the coolest sections in the game so i'm going to go ahead and be quiet to focus here As you can see here, Chaos reintroduced the Badnik Bounce into Sonic Project 06 and it is incredibly useful, especially in this third section, to uh, skip a bunch of automation with automated pulls and stuff. I am going to use the Crisis City Mock Speed section here because it is basically a straight line in order to explain the double input glitch. So you may have been seeing throughout the run that with the characters I play as, sometimes I'm jumping in the air and just getting an insane amount of height. That is a consequence of something called the double input glitch in this game, where essentially if I press A and X together with pretty much every single character, that character will in fact jump twice as high, and that's just due to how inputs are read in Sonic Project 06. There's a little bit more behind the scenes going on, but that's the general gist. With most characters other than Tails and Silver, if you press A and X, you'll be able to do a super jump. I guess we want to be real technical 
Tails, Silver, Sonic and the Princess, and Mach Speed Sonic. However, with Tails and Sonic and Princess Elise, you can, in fact, do a high jump um, just by pressing A and B together instead of A and X. Moving on to uh, one of my favorite stages in the entire Sonic series is Flame Core. Not necessarily for the aesthetics, but just for the level design. This game is extremely awesome. What you just saw me do there is another consequence of the double input glitch. Something that isn't a consequence of the double input glitch is the fact that both Sonic and Shadow in this game have the ability to do an extra jump dash if you use their air action. So for Sonic, it would be the bounce attack, and for Shadow, it would be his Chaos Spear in midair. Uh, we call it the homing attack refresh because it refreshes the charge to do a jump dash or a homing attack. However, if you use the double input glitch, it actually bypasses the need to do another air action. So we can just go ahead and just straight up do two uh, jump dashes, one right after the other. And with one of the custom jump dash types that are available to us in this game, uh, the legacy jump dash, we can inherit the momentum of whatever the character is doing because it's called the legacy jump dash because it's very similar to how the jump dash functions in Sonic Heroes and in Shadow the Hedgehog, uh, the 2005 game. But yeah, so it's very cool. Another consequence of the legacy jump dash is we can actually use a cool ability with Sonic called the, um, uh, well, what we call the bounce excel or the uh, drop dash if you want a more uh, contemporary term. But basically what it is, is we just do a bounce attack and then immediately do a jump dash and that Son sends Sonic straight down. And the moment we hit the ground, instead of bouncing back up, we can just immediately do a spin dash or a blue gem or one of his many other actions that he has available to him in this game. Again, I think the gems are one of the best things they've ever done for a Sonic character. The idea is just so cool, giving a character a bunch of unique abilities uh, via upgrades, kind of like this. But uh, unfortunately, again, it was only present in Sonic 06, and because uh, Sega wants nothing to do with this game anymore, we uh, probably won't ever see it ever again. Moving on here, using the purple gem more uh, intentionally this time, uh, each gem has the ability to be leveled up three times, and you can do that by defeating enemies. And with each additional level, uh, with the purple gem, you gain an additional jump. So that allows us to skip some platforming there and head straight uh, to the goal ring of Flame Core. One of my favorite stages. Moving on to Radical Train. This uh, is also called Radical Pain, which is uh, kind of funny considering in retail 06 speedruns, so speedruns of the original game, um, this is a run killer quite a bit as well as it is here in Sonic P06. And that's because of this particular trick here. All right, beautiful. So basically what happened there is I had to do a jump dash out of that automation onto that crane and do a very quick blue gem high jump, which is like four inputs at a time. You can scroll back on the video and actually look at my controller. I'm holding out a lot of buttons there, and it's a very, very tight window. And if you press the buttons in the incorrect order, uh, Sonic will just fall to his death there. So I'm very happy. That I was able to get that particular trick uh, on this commentated speed run because it's very cool. Oh, just missing missing the dash panels there. But you know we got a mock speed section, so of course we're going to be supersonic. A very cool mock speed section. My personal second favorite um, of the four that we have in this game. Um, one thing that I didn't talk about in Wave Ocean or Crisis City is that the fastest form of movement is the light dash. And in fact, for every moment we are not light dashing with supersonic here in the mock speed section, we're actually losing speed. So we want to be able to light dash as quickly as possible. Another cool little nod to Sonic Adventure 1 that Chaos added is supersonic in this game. If you're moving fast enough, he actually has a blue aura. And that's similar to Perfect Chaos's boss fight in Sonic Adventure 1, where if you were moving fast enough to Sonic, uh, with supersonic, his aura would turn blue and uh, you would be moving as fast as a lightning bolt. At least that's how Tikal explained it. Moving on to our second and final Princess Elise stage here in Tropical Jungle. Um, we are just going to skip a bit of platforming here and fall straight into this de uh, jump panel, I think they're called. I always confuse, uh, <laughs> or I call them dash panels, even though they're technically something different. And we're going to go ahead and take a bit of a secret route here. Obviously, this isn't the main route of Tropical Jungle, but it is the one that is the fastest. Thankfully, your jump dash type carries over to Sonic and Elise. 
so you're not locked into using a particular jump dash uh, with a particular type. As long as you are controlling Sonic, you are going to have the same jump dash type. So basically, we're just doing a couple of contact sensitive actions with swinging off these vines and just making sure we don't die. Uh, which, unfortunately, is something that is very common because, like I said, in Dusty Desert, with how neutered Sonic is and especially without his gem abilities, uh, we aren't able to actually uh, save ourselves if we mess up. One other big skip here, what we're going to do is instead of taking this automation, we are going to jump over the kill plane and hopefully land in the load trigger. Oh my goodness, I'm super happy that we got that on the first try. That's called log skip. It's a very scary trick, but uh, I'm happy I was able to show that off in this commentated speed run here. I'm going to take it a bit slow here because the fire shield allows us to walk on water, but it also uses up action gauge. If you uh, run out of action gauge when you're on top of the water, you're basically, very literally, dead in the water. Sonic and Elise immediately die. A bit unforgiving, but uh, this is a speed run, so... Have to account for uh, safety measures sometimes. Moving on into what I like to call the gauntlet of Kingdom Valley and Aquatic Base. One of Chaos's personal favorite works of mine right there, that little cutscene between Silver and uh, and Sonic at the beginning of this stage here, really upping the stakes, you know, in terms of the story. Um, but Kingdom Valley is one of the most difficult stages in this game. There's so much tech going on. There's, like, so many swapping of gems. We are going to be using the blue gem mostly, and you are over certain death almost the entire time you are in this stage. Uh, all the way from when you start with Sonic to the mock speed section, uh, making liberal use of skipping automation and switching to our favorite Silver Hedgehog. Silver the Hedgehog controls way better in PO6 than he does in Retail 06. He's been sped up significantly. His teleport dash, rather than going a set distance, can actually be used as long as he has action gauge meter, similar to Sonic's white gem. Um, but what we're going to do is just go ahead and skip a little cutscene there with a door, use a psychokinesis to lay some boxes down here, and then do a teleport dash to skip a little bit of combat and, you know, pressing the rune and all that, and switching ourselves back over to Sonic the Hedgehog. Skipping a bit more automation there with the spring and just doing a blue gem and using the slope of that uh, crumble piece there. Uh, to head on into section three, which we're immediately going to do another automation skip going over the top of this castle. Man, this game just doesn't stop. <laughs> I don't uh, commentate runs very often, but uh, uh, I haven't done a Sonic one in a while, in fact, and just commentating the speed run just kind of reminds me of how insanely crazy this game is when you're playing at a, uh, a high level, I like to put in quotes, because... Uh, you know, sometimes things can go awry, but hopefully not here. What I'm going to be showing off is Castle Skip. So there's this huge, long, automated section, but uh, with a little bit of finesse, a high jump, and Sonic's Blue Gem, we can skip that entire automated sequence and just go straight back into the action, getting to the end of Kingdom Valley in an extremely fast fashion. Moving on to our single use of the Yellow Gem here, generating the Lightning Shield. It's more useful if you're a lot closer to 50 rings, but those enemies can sometimes bop you with their guns. And if you don't have, uh, if you don't have the lightning shield equipped and you go below 50 rings, you can't transform into supersonic for the mock speed section. Who little uh, bit of camaraderie there with Silver defending us as we head into the mock speed section. We were Super Sonic, so it isn't too big of a deal, but still a cool thing to see, especially if you play as normal Sonic. Um, a bit of an automation skip as uh, we enter our final mock speed section here with mock speed Super Sonic. Again, if you've ever played Retail 06 or if you've ever played through P06 with normal Sonic, you can see just how crazy fast Super Sonic is in comparison. Oh, we are just going to uh, do one more little bit of automation here. There is a way to skip this, but it is extremely dangerous. And on a run like this, I definitely don't want to mess anything up. Considering it's a bit of a rite of passage to get a sub three minute Kingdom Valley. And let me tell you, I'm super happy that we were able to do that. <laughs> Especially in a commentated speedrun. Um, it was for a long time considered 
almost impossible to get a sub three kingdom valley outside of a individual level context. Uh, but now it's fairly standard among the high level speedrunners. Moving on to our final full feature stage, Aquatic Base here. One of my favorite personal stages behind Flame Core. Um, we get to do a bunch of Badnik bounces, a lot of blue gem as we've seen throughout this entire run. And just in general, uh, cool movement. Now this level is a lot more linear than say like Kingdom Valley or uh, Wave Ocean, but uh, still pretty cool stuff. One of my favorite skips coming up here right after this room is going to be Ball Skip, which, uh, you know how I talked about how insanely fast you have to be with the inputs on the crane? Well, the same applies here. Actually going to slow down a bit to make sure we have level 3 purple gem, just in case we need to save ourselves. We are going to use these very tiny platforms to do some blue gem high jumps, along with the purple gem. Oh, dang. Unfortunately, we messed up the Ball Skip, but that's okay. What we can do here is we can just go right back up and unfortunately we have level one of the blue gem and level one of the purple gem so things are going to take just a little bit longer but uh that's normally not too big of a deal these platforms again are very small this is probably one of the toughest tricks to do i know a lot of people who run project 06 just say screw it i'm gonna take the ball but uh i am a, a bit of an insane person considering how uh how much i uh, play this game, so I like to do ball skip even if we fail at that one time uh, Thankfully that does kind of showcase that Sonic PO6 is an incredibly forgiving speed game if you want to get into a Sonic uh, Speed run this is definitely a great game to do so because you can in fact restart sections of stages You don't have to restart the entire level if you don't want to in addition There are liberal liberal amount of checkpoints in this game. So uh Death is normally a slap on the wrist, even when you're playing at a high level. You can usually get an extremely good run, even with a death like we got there with Ball Skip. Doing a little bit of spin dashing just to uh, hit those magnetic pulls and destroy those enemies, getting us back up to that level 3 blue gem where we like to be at, and uh, continually continuing on. One of my favorite tricks there, I call it the strike. It's just spin dashing right through those enemies. Again, another bit of automation skip there. Destroy those guys, and we are going to just go through another linear set piece here as the hatches are closing. The Dr. Eggman is trying to keep Sonic out of his aquatic base, but we're not going to have any of that. Go ahead and level up the purple gem once more here because we got some crazy movement. Our second and final section with Knuckles, again, one of the most uh, disappointing parts of uh, just because of how, you know, the gliding works in this game and just how gliding works in general is we can bypass all of the obstacles with knuckles and just hit the switch with sonic now chaos did re uh implement the ball section here uh that was absent from retail 06 sonic would just spawn at the next door which didn't make a lot of sense but knuckles's help feels a little bit more justified here in the remake um because we actually have to go through that ball section so once we head through there we're going to head, go ahead and destroy this enemy, and he gives us so many chaos drives that we can level up the green gem to level 3 here. And what that allows us to do is an area of effect tornado kick, which allows us to destroy those enemies because they're dire directly above us, and there's no good way for Sonic to uh, use some or to attack something that's directly above him. Now, you may be saying, Stummo, you've only used 7 of the gems. That's because I've been waiting until our final moments here to use the red gem. The red gem, unfortunately, is nerfed from its uh, counterpart in Retail 06, whereas Sonic would not slow down, but the entire game would. Unfortunately, when Chaos programmed the gems in Unity, it is very uh, difficult without a massive amount of slowdown to program something like that to keep Sonic at the same speed but not slow or but slow everything else down so the red gem unfortunately slows everything down including Sonic kind of like time break in Sonic and the Secret Rings if you've ever played that it's definitely useful when you're newer to the game but unfortunately it has barely any use I just wanted to show it off here Finally, we enter Tails' Wave Ocean, the most important stage in the game, as we are chasing the Egg Carrier with Tails, a character that we've already played through Wave Ocean with, in fact, and we will play through the exact same set pieces that we played with as Tails in Wave Ocean, uh, because Sonic 06 was a very well-designed game. Um, 
So we're just doing a little bit of flying here. Basically, this stage is just uh, time for you to sit and reflect on how well you played the previous stages. Other than that death at the very end with uh, ball skip and aquatic base, this was a spectacular run. I'm very, very happy with it. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed as well. Um, I hope to get into a couple marathon runs. So if you... Oh, excuse me. If you enjoy Project 06, I highly recommend checking out the other videos on my channel. Uh, I talk about Project 06 almost exclusively and some other Sonic fan games and that type of stuff. And I just have an absolute blast playing this game. And if you've never seen Project 06 before, especially in 2023, this is how you want to experience uh, Sonic 06. How in our minds it was truly envisioned. But with that, we hit the goal ring right on 24 minutes. Absolutely fantastic run. I believe we were running against the game time. So the real time of 24.33, still a fantastic run. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope, you, uh, I hope this gave you incentive to download Sonic Project 06. Have a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one.